Hi, I'm Greg with Seabird Scientific. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to flush the pH sensor on the HydroCat EP V2 after deployment. Now, the reason why we would do this is to prevent any corrosive seawater from contacting the pins that connect your pH sensor to your HydroCat EP. So first thing we're gonna do is put down some paper towels or maybe put this in a container to catch any water that's gonna leak out of this system. Second thing we're gonna do is remove this plug right here that is occupying the space for the flushing port screw right here. So now we have an opening that goes from the outside of the HydroCat EP body to the spot where the pH sensor is connected. Now we're going to take the yellow tubing from the cleaning kit and the syringe from the cleaning kit. Twist that tubing onto the syringe. and fill this with deionized water. If you don't have deionized water, clean distilled water will work as well. Once you have that full DI water, you're gonna take the end of this tubing and fit it into the opening where we just removed that screw. Once it's fit, you're going to depress the plunger and you'll see water leaking out the sides of the HydroCat EP. That's good. That means that this deionized water is displacing any seawater that might be inside the system. Okay, so now that we've removed any potential seawater that is inside of the system, when we pull the pH sensor out of the HydroCat EP, any water that's contacting the connector will be clean deionized water, much less likely to corrode the pins on the sensor or on the HydroCat itself. Now I'm going to remove this pH sensor from the HydroCat E key by taking my 5 64ths Allen key and evenly loosening the two captured screws that hold this in place. Now I'm doing about a full turn to a half turn each time until I feel it loose. And then I can more quickly back out each screw. Once you've loosened both of these completely, set aside your Allen key and pull the pH module straight up, carefully pulling it away from the HydroCat EP. Now, before we store this in the soaker block, I'm going to inspect the connector. And right now I can see that there is some water bridging the O-ring and some water around the pins. That's okay. This water that I see here is the clean deionized water that I just flushed through the system. So I'm going to take a clean lint-free wipe and very carefully dry these pins and around the o-ring taking care not to introduce any lints or debris to the o-ring sealing surface now if there is a significant amount of water here you can also displace it with high purity isopropyl alcohol or use compressed air to blow it away from the pins so my connector is quite dry and now I'm going to take the pH soaker block, install the pH sensor in the soaker block, and carefully screw this down into place. Now, be very careful not to over tighten these screws. Doing so can damage the pH sensor and the soaker block. I'm tightening these just until snug. No, I'm not over tightening this. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the plastic screw from the soaker block and fill this with potassium chloride solution. In the pH sensors kit, you'll have a bottle of potassium chloride and also this lid that has this dispensing tip. I'm simply going to pour this in place until the potassium chloride solution has completely filled the server block. Now I like to pour it until I can see a bubble on top of it, 
It's okay if it's overflowing. We just need to make sure that this is completely full of potassium chloride. Now I'm going to take my plastic cap, put it in place. That's going to displace any extra potassium chloride. And I'm going to screw it in place, making sure that's snug. And then wipe off any excess. Now that this is installed, we have our pH sensor properly stored wet inside of the soaker block. If this is left out to dry, it can affect your calibration and potentially damage your sensor. So always store it with potassium chloride. Now I'm just going to inspect this to make sure that I don't have any potassium chloride leaking out and that the sensor is snug in the soaker block. Now that it is, I'm going to store it upright. That's ready for storage. Now, the last thing that we need to do is replace the pH sensor with the dummy block in here. Recall that there is a small connector in here that we also need to clean and ensure it's dry. So take another lint-free wipe. And I like to take a flashlight and under good lighting, inspect this connector to make sure that all the water is gone. And then the O-ring sealing surface is free of moisture any fibers and debris. Make sure to do this under proper lighting so you can properly inspect your sensor. Okay, so now that my connector is clean and dry, I'm going to take the pH dummy block and install it. This tall part goes in the spot where the sensing element installs in the hydrocat, and this depressed part here goes onto the connector. So I'm taking this, pushing it into place, and then carefully tightening the two captured screws evenly. So they're properly installed on the hydrocat body. Being extremely careful not to over tighten these, only tightening them until snug. Now, take that and make sure it doesn't shake back and forth and we are ready to store our HydroCat EP V2. For more information about the HydroCat EP V2 or to see more maintenance videos, please click the links below.